What's up with the JL corroding hinges? Why are they corroding? How do I fix it? What's the proper fix? My dealer won't help me. This looks terrible. I can't believe this happened. I'm gonna buy a Bronco now because the JL door hinges are corroding. Well, good luck, because you'll probably have to wait three years to get that thing in. <laughs> Now, is there a proper fix? Yes, there are some TSBs and some recalls to properly fix the hinges corroding. It's a big issue, and I wish Jeep would correct it from the factory, but I'm not gonna rip the entire company apart just because of that. If you're looking for a video that explains why they corrode, what I think about it, and how you can possibly fix it, this is your one-stop shop, and it's right here at Dirt Road Cred. Let's get into it. Before we get too far, today's video is sponsored in part by Rock Stoppers. Rock Stoppers produces 3M paint protection film pieces that'll protect the front of your hinges on your JL or your Gladiator. They're a USA-based company, they're a family-owned business, and for less than 30 bucks, you can protect your hinges from unsightly nicks and scratches from going off-road and having rocks flying up to them. We will leave the link in the description, and while they won't protect from corrosion, they're gonna save your hinges. Galvanic corrosion, also called bimetallic corrosion or dissimilar metal corrosion, is an electrochemical process in which one metal corrodes preferentially when it is in electrical contact with another in the presence of an electrolyte. A similar galvanic reaction is exploited in primary cells to generate a useful electrical voltage. We don't need to worry about that, but what we do need to worry about is the anode and the cathode and how they react and create galvanic corrosion or galvanic. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but that's what Wikipedia has to say. And that's what we're talking about. Galvanic corrosion, dissimilar metal corrosion. We've got two metals, the aluminum on the door shell of the JL Wrangler and the steel or cast iron that is on the hinges. Well, last time I checked, those are two dissimilar metals and they went smacked them right together and they didn't paint in between them either. Now what's happening is those two metals are basically pressing up against each other so tight that you've got two different ways that they can corrode and then also that anode, cathode, electrical, mumbo jumbo, the stuff I should have remembered in science class. And what's happening, that corrosion is bubbling, it's kind of creating that reaction and it is looking for a way to escape. So that's why you're seeing along the borders, you're seeing along the edges and then primarily at the door hinges, hood hinges and tailgate hinges. So that was the layman's terms of, well actually that was the kind of the scientific terms of what's actually happening on your door. The worst thing about that is that for new Jeep owners or people new to the industry, they really don't understand that this has been happening for quite some time now. I can tell you that on my YJs, TJs, JKs, I've all experienced a little bit of that issue. Fortunately, with the TJs and YJs, they were similar metals, so it didn't happen until a very long time later. And that was just strictly from rust and that you had just kind of an open seal there or a gap where water and salt could get into. Now on my JK, I've seen some pretty bad ones where actually the hinge itself, so the outside on the exterior of the door panel, that would start kind of chipping away and you would see that cast iron or the cast piece of steel exposed and it could start to get some pitting. I experienced that on my white JK, but it took quite some time. It almost took seven or eight years and then I was getting just a little bit around the edges, but I also took very good care of that. What we're seeing in the JLs is a little bit quicker. So we have the two different types of metal that are on top of each other. It's creating that reaction to happen a little bit faster than it typically would have which is alleviating that pressure, causing some pitting, causing some chipping, and then the rust can begin and kind of peek into there a little bit. Don't fret though, there is an answer to that problem, and that is contacting a local dealership that knows exactly what is going on with that situation. So do not waste your time with, dare I say, the mom and pop dealership or some dealership that absolutely has no idea what you're talking about. You wanna get a hold of someone that has dealt with this, experienced it, and knows how to properly submit all the paperwork, and then it can be fixed up by your local paint shop. Normally the dealerships will outsource this to a good body shop local to them that has either addressed the problem before or does common body shop work for them if they have damaged in shipping or if they need something touched up when it comes to the dealership. So that would be the step one, is kind of reach out to them and express it in the right way, guys. There is a right and a wrong way to call a dealership. The biggest thing is not to rip apart the service advisor's head because he doesn't own Jeep, he doesn't build the Wranglers, nor does he have any influence in the fact that it is corroding. So I get sometimes it can be a very heated decision, but definitely call and just express what's going on and definitely be polite. That's the biggest thing is I think we owe service advisors get beat up very badly on the phone and it's typically not their fault. So definitely give them a call to the right dealership, explain what's going on. What I wanna do in the comments, if you guys have worked with a dealership in your state that has corrected this issue and gone through it pretty easily with you, drop that dealership name and what state you're in. That can be used as a resource 
for all of our viewers. So if you're in that state or in the nearby area, you could reach out and they'll know what to do. What should happen after the fact? So what we actually did here recently is we had a set of JL factory half doors that were paint matched. And from what we could tell, getting some shots while they were being painted, is they actually put the hinges on after the fact. So I think it's because these are done at a separate location than the factory. They're done at like the Mopar Accessories giant other factory. But when they pulled them apart, the back side of the hinges and the actual full door skin was completely painted. And that might be the reason why if you guys have white or gray half doors or any other color but black, you can see that the torque screws to hold on the hinges are still black. That means that they didn't paint that all as one unit. They put them on, tightened them, matched them to the Jeep, and then loaded them into the back of there. Really though, that is the solution from what I've gathered so far. It is to paint both of those surfaces, make sure that you have great adhesion with that paint, and then mate them together. Now, will that prevent it forever? I'd probably say no. I'd say that all things will eventually fade out, but it should extremely elongate the process of any sort of corrosion potential with the JL doors. I can say that we, when we reattach them here, we had it done paint on both sides and it was a nice clean fit. The only thing that you're gonna have, if they would do that with the factory and then had to adjust the door lines and where everything sits, you might get some scratching on there. So is this a problem that they need to address in the future? I would say yes. By the same token, it's going to be a very costly problem to address from the factory because you've just completely changed the entire production process to make it that it's not all getting painted at once. You've got to paint the skins, paint the hinges, make sure that they match now, and then align the doors in the final process without scratching the door panels. If you guys can imagine all that happening while they're producing thousands of these things a week, that is going to be huge and a very costly expenditure. I'd say it's probably cheaper to let them kind of corrode out a little bit, maybe in the future and then fix it or pay for some of those errors that they made compared to making that investment initially. And I'm not doubting anyone because if you guys run a multi-billion dollar company, I'm sure that those little expenditures can really add up when you're producing a ton of these vehicles. But overall though, we went over a couple things in today's video. We talked about exactly how it happens, what sort of chemical process is causing the corrosion, where we've seen it in the hood hinges, the door hinges, and the tailgate hinges because it's all similar mounting structures. And then what to do if yours is happening. So what to do if the Galvana corrosion is occurring with your Jeep, how to address it, and then how to kind of approach the dealership because there is a way to do that and bashing Jeep on comments, bashing them on the forums and ripping them apart on Instagram on their posts, that's not the way to do that. And I would say if they're gonna look back into it, that's not a good look for you. So if you want something done, be polite, be respectful, but push the issue if you have to a little bit in the future. And then also we've gone over how to fix it. So painting both sides of the surface, it will work. So we did it just now with our JL half doors and they mounted up beautifully. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And this is a very interesting one for me because as a Jeep enthusiast, a Jeep lover, a Jeep YouTube channel, We've experienced this and we feel you, you're spending 60, 70, 80, even 90,000 on the 392. You don't expect this to happen and you don't want it to, but Jeep will make it right. So definitely reach out to the dealership if you're experiencing this issue. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, get those hinges fixed. My name's Matt with Dirt Road Cred and I want you to get out there and earn yours.